So here I am again in JR's office. Don't you love the shiny white walls that are behind me? Such an inspiration as I make this series of videos. This time we're looking at keeping the hope tank full and JR's just trying to keep his face straight as I do these, these videos and, and try not to mess up as I usually do. This is the first take by the way. We're looking at keeping the hope tank full. In Matthew chapter 11, we read a story about John the Baptist. Now, I, I don't know if you know much about John the Baptist. I guess most of you would, but John the Baptist was an incredible guy, an incredible prophet. I mean, his background, his history is, it's totally miraculous. His parents never expected to have a child, but God spoke to his dad an angel spoke to his dad and told him that he was going to have a son and that he was going to be called John. And, and John's dad was so blown away by this. In fact, he was so unbelieving about what he heard that the angel struck him dumb and said that he wouldn't speak again uh, until the child was born. So it was just an amazing, amazing background. And of course, uh, sometime later, John comes into the world and everybody's expecting to, his parents to give him some sort of family name. I, I don't know, perhaps name him after his father, Zachariah. But, but Zachariah writes on a tablet, he says, the boy is to be called John. And so John comes into the world and, and we're told that John was in this world as a prophet, as a fulfillment of scripture. He was the one who would make way, he would prepare the way for the Messiah. In fact, we're, we're told that he was full of the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. John was an amazing prophet. He brought about a national revival. The, the, the whole nation was just spellbound by his preaching and loads and loads of people were baptized as they responded to John's message. Uh, his ministry was, was something that the nation hadn't seen the like of for many, many hundreds of years. But then one day John decided that he would confront or he would challenge Herod uh, about his uh, private life. And the result is that John ended up in prison. And in Matthew chapter 11, we find a story uh, that relates to John's time in prison. Because John sent some of his disciples to ask Jesus if he is the one who should come. If he's the one that they really were all waiting for. Now I don't know what was going on in John's mind and we're not told. But it would seem as though John was somehow just a little bit concerned. Or he was beginning to have a few questions about, uh, about Jesus and about whether he really was the one. And perhaps, I don't know, perhaps he was feeling a little depressed, perhaps he was wondering why things had turned out the way that they had, uh, perhaps he was wondering why he was in prison, and I don't know, maybe he was even wondering if it was worth it all. But somehow his hope tank was in danger of running on empty. And of course Jesus sends back word to John and he tells John, or he sends word through John's disciples uh, that there's all sorts of amazing things happening the blind are seeing the, the lame are walking people are being healed uh, and and then Jesus says these words he says blessed is the one who is not offended on account of me if John John the Baptist one of the greatest prophets that ever lived in fact Jesus said he was the greatest of the prophets up until that time if John could find himself in a place where he was questioning things, I think we can too. Um, sometimes we just need to revisit the hope that we have in Jesus. You know, Paul says in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, we, you know, even when we grieve, even when we lose loved ones, we do not grieve as the world grieves because the world has no hope. But we're different. We are people who have hope even in the face of death. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, says in, in the first chapter of his first epistles, he says that we have been given birth into a new and living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You know, before we look at any other kind of hope or, or the impact that hope can have on our lives, it's good to remind ourselves that we have hope in the face of the greatest enemy that mankind have, has ever known, namely death. We can face death with hope because we know Jesus. But the Bible says some other things about hope as well. In Hebrews chapter 6, it compares hope to an anchor. We have uh, our hope going through the curtain, it says. Uh, that's talking about going right into the presence of God. And that hope is like an anchor. Yeah, an anchor is something that keeps a, st a ship steady in all the storms. Uh, it's, it's something that, that creates stability in an unstable environment. And you know, when we have our hope in God, when our hope is in Jesus, we are able to keep steady. We're able to keep stable in an unstable world, in a, a world in which everything that's going on around us might be unstable or uncertain. We have the certain, the sure and certain hope of Jesus and of what he has done for us and of a future that really is secure. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul talks about us having, uh, having hope as a helmet. He talks about uh, the helmet of the hope of salvation. You know, when you think of what a helmet does, a helmet is something that protects a soldier's head. It's meant to protect his head from pieces of shrapnel uh, or, or bullets or, or, or debris that, that might come his way in the face of battle and hope in the same way guards our heads it guards our minds against uh, the thoughts that the enemy would try to put into our minds you know so often what the enemy wants to do is he wants to try to depress us he wants to get us to a place of discouragement or a place of despair but you know as Christians as people who follow Jesus we always have hope we always have hope because Jesus is our hope and he is the hope that never fails and we have a hope that never dies. So I want to encourage you as, you as you fill up your hope tank to put on the helmet of the hope of salvation, to keep your thoughts hopeful, to keep your, your mind fixed on Jesus and, to, and to, just to remember that whatever happens in this life, no one can take away from you what God has given to you. No one can steal eternity from you. He is going to be with you. He's going to keep you. Build yourself up in the promises of God. Build yourself up on the things that speak hope into your mind. Fix the hope, the, the helmet of the hope of salvation firmly upon your mind. And lay hold of that anchor, that hope that's an anchor. Because when you hope in Jesus, when you hope in him, that you will... Find that you have stability in an unstable world. You have certainty in an uncertain world. And you will be able to keep going through all the storms of life. I hope that as you, as you do this study, as you look at the life of John the Baptist, and you look at what the New Testament says about hope, I pray that fresh hope will be born in your heart and that you begin to look to the future with a, a degree of optimism and a degree of hope that you've never known before, and all because of Jesus.